Welcome to The Bo Show. When President Trump's Florida home, Mar-a-Lago, was raided by the FBI on August 8th, it was unprecedented. Trump had about 15 boxes of top secret or classified boxes of documents in an area where the FBI had suggested additional locks just a few months before the raid. That was quite ironic. An affidavit is sworn testimony and contains pertinent information, including witnesses, which are meant to justify to a judge why a search warrant would be required, potentially to investigate a crime. Many affidavits remain sealed since the investigation is ongoing and can reveal the direction and the scope of an investigation. Last week in an initial hearing before Magistrate Judge Bruce Reinhardt, the Department of Justice argued that the affidavit should remain sealed for this reason. But Trump's legal team argued for a full unredacted affidavit, considering the unprecedented nature of such a search and seizure. After all, nothing like this has ever happened before. But Trump wasn't the only person wanting it unsealed. The media wanted it too. And Judge Reinhardt noted that there is a significant public interest in this raid. So therefore, last week, he gave the DOJ a week to redact the portions it wants to stay hidden and release some form of the affidavit, which he will then review and determine what can be released. Each side pleads its case. When I interviewed Trump consultant and friend Roger Stone, he explained to me that the DOJ could have gone about this a much different way since they had been trying to acquire these documents for months. But just as they did with his own home, the DOJ preferred a stealth surprise raid. What could be in those documents they want so badly? Trump even said that they broke into his safe. Stone said that they ransacked his house, even punching through photos of his own mother just to see if anything was behind it. It seems the feds retrieved 11 sets of classified documents and that they are looking into potential violations of three laws including one that governs gathering, transmitting, or losing defense information under the Espionage Act. The other statutes address the concealment, mutilation, or removal of records and the destruction, alteration, or falsification of records in federal investigations. Now, before we get into the actual affidavit, I think it's just important to understand how intrusive that this is. As we look back at the Mueller investigation, it now seems like it was a true witch hunt because the FISA warrant was justified on the basis of Christopher Steele's fake Russian dossier, which had been paid for by the Democratic National Committee and the Hillary Clinton campaign. Without that document, you don't get a FISA warrant and you don't get Robert Mueller. That started the whole thing. And now we are seeing in documents that Trump would not have been convicted of obstructing that investigation. That was years of taxpayer money spent on a phony document, all intended to seem like Trump had colluded with the Russians to win the 2016 election. That never happened. We saw that Special Agent Peter Strzok and his lover, Lisa Page, had created this insurance policy if Trump won. That was flat out corruption and happened under former FBI Director James Comey's watch, whom Trump rightly fired. But that investigation put a number of people in jail, from Paul Manafort to almost Roger Stone, had Trump not pardoned him at the last second. Then came the whole phone call with Zelensky, and they went after that. Trump has posted on his Truth Social that he declassified a number of documents regarding Operation Crossfire Hurricane which is what led to the Russia collusion investigation. It's interesting to me that Trump would make such a remark right after the Mar-a-Lago raid. Was he hinting at what's in those 15 boxes? Is Trump worried at all about what's in those boxes? Or has he intentionally set a trap for the FBI so that if they do become public, we all know the truth? And some info about uh, Magistrate Judge Bruce Reinhardt. Shortly after leaving his role in the U.S. Attorney's Office in 2008, he represented Jeffrey Epstein's pilot and scheduler, among other Epstein employees. Even if there isn't a noticeable conflict of interest, isn't it odd that he goes from the DOJ, who was investigating Epstein, to defending Epstein Associates? Reinhardt has made only one known comment about the former president around the context 
of the late Congressman John Lewis. Reinhardt stated, quote, John Lewis is the conscience of America. Donald Trump doesn't have the moral stature to kiss John Lewis's feet, unquote. Reinhardt also strangely recused himself when assigned to the case of Trump's lawsuit that the Clinton campaign and the DNC conspired to make false connections to him with Russia. It's not clear why Reinhardt recused himself from that case. But it's Judge Reinhardt that saw every bit of this affidavit and approved the raid. How can we not have some doubts about this judge given the facts presented about his recusal and also his comments about Trump? I mean, even if he'd said that same type of comment about Joe Biden, you might begin to think that the guy's kind of a partisan guy. But rarely does that ever happen in the legal community. It's stacked with leftists. However, Trump was able to appoint a number of federal judges. So that may change. But one thing is clear. In spite of Reinhardt's ethical jurisprudence, as lauded by his peers, his actions and his rare political commentary have spoken somewhat loudly. It certainly doesn't merit any threats or intimidation, like we saw with people doing and, and doxing Brett Kavanaugh, but it does call us to take into consideration because it's unique. Now let's look at the affidavit itself. It was pretty bare bones, and much of it, as expected, was heavily redacted. Judge Reinhardt agreed with every single redaction the FBI and DOJ proposed. How's that for fairness? In the copy, which was released on Friday, an unnamed FBI agent said that the government's investigation was predicated on part on a referral from the National Archives and Records Administration, otherwise known as NARA, which has said it identified classified records in the tranche of boxes transferred to it from Mar-a-Lago in January. A review of the boxes by FBI agents identified 184 documents with classification markers, including 25 marked as top secret, the agent said. It reads, quote, based upon the following facts, there is probable cause to believe that the locations to be searched at the premises contain evidence, contraband, fruits of crime, or other items illegally possessed in violation of 18 U.S. Code subsection 793E, 1519, or 2071. It appears that this all comes at the behest of the National Archives, yet another one of our very politicized bureaus in Washington, D.C. So it was a special agent at the National Archives that started all of this. You can rest assured that such a person would be partisan, or it could be a rhino-style Republican that's a never-Trumper. We know that's happened before. In the probable cause section of the, of the affidavit, it says that the archives are very concerned about classified documents that got intermingled with photos, magazine articles, and other correspondence. Now, Tash Patel, who worked for Trump, has said that Trump declassified these documents because as president, he has a right to. In which case, the DOJ is arguing that those docs are not being stored in a secure location at Mar-a-Lago. But if Trump declassified them, then they wouldn't need to be at a secure location. Take a look at all the redactions. Just look at these, page after page after page. So we don't know who the witnesses are who testified and helped create this affidavit as they want to keep that obscured. 